Hello everyone, welcome to EQDA platform and this is Ravin Jangir here, your electrical faculty. And in this video, I'm going to dictate about the HVDC VSE transmission system. It is uh, actually using a kind of new technology that is actually the IGBT. And uh, these are the points written here. Okay, we will uh, discuss one by one. So this is the IGBT technology. IGBT is actually the insulated gated uh, bipolar transistor, which is actually superior to if we are using the thyristor valves. So thyristor valves actually replaced mercury mercury valves, and it is then replaced by the uh, GTO. Then it is replaced by the IGBT now. So now we are using currently IGBT technology, which is the more advanced version of uh, the thyristor valves. So, what are the this new technology one by one? I am going to discuss here. So, let's proceed. Now, in the HVDC, that is the high voltage direct current transmission schemes. If I am talking about the HVDC transmission schemes, it is kind of new technology. Okay, because in this we are using the IGBT chipsets. So, what is the IGBT chipsets? It is insulated gated bipolar transistor. What is it? Insulated gated bipolar transistor. So this new technology actually initially used for the rectification and the inversion purposes. What is the rectification? Rectification is conversion from AC to DC. Okay. Or what is the inversion? It is from DC to the AC. As we are using the two converter stations or depending on the firing angle, it can be controlled from 0 to 90 degree. We are uh, if the firing angle that is the alpha. If it is from 0 to 90 degree, then it is a rectifier, it will behave as a rectifier. If it is from 90 degree to 180 degree, then it will behave obviously as an inverter. Okay, now IGBT properties are superior to thyristor as I have already told. So I can say that the IGBT properties are, if we are using the IGBT uh, chipsets, then it is going to be a superior as we were using the thyristor walls. Now, because using the IGBT chipsets, the stability, the most important thing, the stability you have to remember of the voltages and the frequency is increased. It means the voltage level and the frequency controllability is actually increased. So I can say the stability of the voltage and the frequency is increased. Now, so I can write that this is the important point. The stability, stability of the grids of the system is increased now ultimately we have to stable our grid system so if we are using the igbt chipsets then stability of the grid system is actually enhanced okay now we are moving for the next point now i am talking about what are the actually advantages and the features of hvdc vsc systems so i am talking about the first point okay look at here it is actually suitable to use under the underwater cabling scheme and the submarines. I have uh, many times I have discussed about this as we were uh, uh, talking about the HVDC transmissions. Initially, HVDC transmission started to, started to be used as underwater cabling and the submarines because there were no options left uh, rather than this. Okay, so uh, it is actually suitable to use underwater cabling schemes because under in the in the sea side okay in, in the sea source we can say the cabling or the if we want the transmissions so the transmissions are actually done by the hvdc transmissions and if we are using the hvdc vhc schemes as this links is using the insulated solid so risk of damage to the cable is reduced okay it means if we are using the hvdc vhc schemes hvdc vhc not the normal thyristor controls this is the a uh, polytronics advancement we can say so insulated solid then risk of the damage to the cable is reduced and this is actually the more advantageous for us now if you are talking about the point number two okay not used for overhead transmissions so hvdc links and the two core and three core transmissions cabling what is the two core as in the hvdc transmission hvdc transmissions one second these are the conductors one is for the positive level 
and another for the return okay and there were the uh, different types of hvdc links as in the bipolar homopolar monopolar in the monopolar we were using only the one conductors for the transmission and one conductor was the c return we were saying in the bipolar we were using the two conductor schemes and uh, uh, there there were no there were not the any return but in the homopolar there were the two conductor schemes but uh, we were also using a ground return or c return so it is kind of two core it is kind of two core three core so these are actually bunched together how they are bunched if i am taking the cross sectional view of this then this type they are bunched together or you can say the composite type bundled type okay now now one second does not produce any external magnetic field then i can say they were they are not going to produce any external magnetic field if they are going to produce the external magnetic field there are uh, there will be many interferences to the nearby communication lines now if i am talking about the third point it is independent control for the active and the reactive part what is the active power active power actually the p as we are denoting because s is actually p plus jq p plus jq so this p is actually is your active power and this q is actually going to be your reactive power so there is independent control we are new, we, we are not using the same uh, same converter stations or same equipments to control both because if you are using then the controllability will not be at the same level so independent control independent control one second independent control of the active okay and reactive power okay now we are moving for the next points now the point number 4 that it can fed the power to the passive networks okay which networks passive networks as you know the passive networks as we know the passive networks are um, they are the active and the passive networks Act active networks i can say they can fed the energy to the systems okay passive networks they actually consumes the energy okay consumes they uh, consumes they uh, uh, you can say mm, they are actually consume absorbing okay inductor and capacitor are actually absorbing okay so this type and uh, resistor is actually dissipating the heat energy in the form of heat energy the passive networks rlnc without any source or generation that is important without any source and generation now if i am talking about the fifth point what is the fifth point if i am talking about the designer configuration that is actually kind of uh, modular concept we were using and if uh, i am talking about the fabrication so it can be fabricated and delivered what it can be fabricated and delivered in the short time okay so now next point next point this is point number 6 which that is the remote control and the unmanned operation as we are using the in the as we are using in the that era where the development is in the uh, development is going on related with the hvdc transmission and new and new technologies are coming with related with the transmission escapes so they are increasing our voltage level controllability our efficiency are, all are increased along with that if we are adding that unmanned operation so that will be more beneficial to use so i can say the remote control and the unmanned operation is actually used now if i am talking about the point number so this is also completed now this is point number 7 if i am talking about the construction this is, so there are many uh, configuration but along with that it is a robust type so the grid if there is a alterations in the grid what alterations in the grid then it uh, it can bear that okay so the construction is kind of robust so the point number 7 is also completed now the point number 8 if i am talking about the noise levels if i am talking about the no noise levels then are actually low and noise with the within the converter stations are actually mitigated the total enclosure causes to reduction in the noise level and better to use as compared to the thyristor walls okay so if i am comparing with the thyristor walls so these are going to be better or uh, these are the enhanced or uh, you can say the developed new technology as compared to the thyristor walls so our point number 8 is also completed now now these are the some advantages which are related with the hvdc vsc transmissions on the ac side first is your or our converter station that reactive power consumption reactive power 
consumption is actually independently in the rectifier and inverter which can be which can be controlled independently as we are using hvdc vsc schemes so please remember this if you are in the converter stations we are using the igbt chipsets or you can say that it is wholly called hvdc vsc transmission okay so these are the some advantages the we, as we have discussed the advantages which were related to the hvdc transmission lines now if we are using the hvdc vsc transmissions what are the advantages that it is going to add in the ac side also so first one i have already first one i have discussed that it is independently in the rectifier and the inverter okay so the controllability if we are using the if we are controlling independently independently in the rectifier station independently in the inverter station so the controllability obviously going to be enhanced now <clears throat> now point number 2 the increased power transfer controllability increased power transfer controllability okay uh capability not the controllability this is uh, not right okay i'm transfer capability okay now so does the power transmission lines are actually operated at the higher voltage level so what is the power transfer capability it, it here it is actually written power transfer capability so what is the power transfer capability so this is represented by p it is actually vr vs vs sin delta upon x okay this is the receiving end power this is the sending end power this is the delta okay and this is the reactances in the transmission line so so power transfer capability is increased so we can say the capability is increased so more we can uh, using the more voltages can be used here so more power into the ac lines more power to the ac lines so can say in the in between these two converter station in between these two converter station we are using the hvdc links and due to as we are using the hvdc links okay so so the power carrying capability will increase and due to this the more voltage level can be increased if the more voltage level can be increased so ac side it means uh, in the generation side and in the distribution side so the more power can be utilized or more power can be generated now the last one is third the faster restoration after blackout if there is a blackout okay so converter station or system uh, system recovery so faster time response can be seen here so these are the some points which are the advantages if we are using hvdc vsc transmission and which are going to add in ac side so i hope uh, up to this you have understood successfully so tata bye bye